Okay, so we have a Ford uh, Galaxy or S Max, one of some fucking thing, for uh, DPF faults. Um, previously given the advice to just cane it down the motorway for a while, and that hasn't helped. What a fucking shock. There's a fault with a car, get it fixed. Right, so how do we find out what's wrong? Well, let's find out. Yeah! Step one, open the bonnet. Everyone just goes and plugs a computer in. Well, fucking open the bonnet, you, you know. You might open the bonnet straight away, see this air pipe missing, or fucking something hanging off. So it's worth a quick look. It takes about two seconds. You'll have to open it later anyway. Have a quick look around. Yeah, ooh, yeah, it looks very shiny. He's just bought this from a big car supermarket -y type place, so it's nice and clean. Um, right, quick look under here, everything looks good. Let's plug it in. Right, so what codes have we got? Yeah, 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 it's a Ford, it might kick the fans in, things like that. You should always have them on charge when doing diagnostics, but as you can see, I don't. I just quickly want to see what's going on, although because it's a Ford 2.2. Pretty confident I already know what's going on before we're looking at it. Um, oh, there you go, it's low battery. What a fucking surprise. Because all these cars have everything. Why do you need everything in your car, people? Steering wheel, a couple of wheels, an engine, maybe some brakes. No, you gotta have a fucking TV and lights that turn themselves on and go around bends and fucking blue teeth and all that shit. Load of bollocks. Stay at home if you want all your fucking creature comforts. Anyway, back to fixing cars. So, oh, there we go. It's just getting into the fucking mental mode. There we go. Diesel particular filter, uh, soot accumulation. Conditions aren't correct for diesel particular filter regeneration. Very common on these boards. I'll explain why. And soot accumulation. Codes. If you've got good reference material, go and type it into your data supplier's website and see what information those little codes give you. Very handy. So, well, it's got too much soot. Conditions aren't right. Hmm. And again, too much soot. Well, I'm going to come out of there. I'm going to fire the engine up for a moment because this is got a low battery. Right. Oh, forget that shit for now, but remember the, the um, conditions thing. Come out of there. Come out of there. Have a look at your live data. What? Um. So the conditions aren't correct. What conditions are required? Go and read a book. They'll tell you all about the different manufacturers have different conditions that the vehicles want to see. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give it away. I haven't even looked at this car, but I'm fucking, I know what's wrong with this, because it's always what's wrong with this, is the ejaculator will be faulty, and Ford's, oh, a lot of systems are different. Ford run a system where they have a, like, what you'd call a fifth injector, or, um, what do they call it? Not an evaporator, a fucking, a... Oh, they got a word for it. It's just, it's evaded my fucking brain at the moment. It's like an injector in the exhaust um, for heating up. If you inject diesel into the DPF, heats it up to temperature for it to regen. It's failed. We know it's failed because they always fucking fail. Um, might not be. I could be completely wrong. I sometimes am, usually. Uh, anyway. But that is one of the conditions, it's not getting hot enough, so there we go. Let's have a look at our actual DPF pressure, what we're reading on our sensor. Could be a million things on these, really, you know. Oh, it's 198% uh, full. Well, that's not good. Um, distance, EGR, EGR, fuck the EGR. Exhaust gas temperature. They're important. If they're fucking around, again, it'll just have aids and won't work properly. Um, fuel pressures all need to be right and whatnot. Well, everything needs to be right, to be honest. Um, and why drive around your car if everything is not right? Where the fuck is particular? There we go. Differential pressure. So um, we've got the voltage. Have we got an actual sensor reading in psi's or in pa's or anything? Huh. Maybe I'm blind. Anyway, so that's an idle, 0.7 of a volt. As we rev it up, it raises to two-ish volts. It's not a great deal. Um, but, what do we get engine off ignition on? Uh, it drops to half a volt. Now, generally, I'd be looking at what the reading is. I'd like to see the reading around zero with just the ignition on with nothing running. 
Um, so it's the hassle of checking the sensor, you're fairly confident the sensor's working. If it reads zero, but I'm half a volt, I'd say it's pretty fine for a um, key on engine off situation. Um, I'm going to test this battery, I think it's fucking duff. Anyway, enough of that bollocks. So, we have got what the car says is 198% full DPF. Well, it's just that's just a calculation because if it was 198% full, the engine wouldn't start. Uh, but a very full DPF. We have got a sensor that yeah, might not be right, but it's working. Um, and we've got some sort of conditions not met. Um, we could throw it in the air and fuck around and whatnot. However, on these Fords, what is nice is you can just go a quick test, or a relatively quick test, you just go and attempt to do a static region. You don't have to carry it all the way out, all you got to do is go into it. Oh fuck off, love. Um, oh shut up! Uh, go into DPF, go into static region, click blah de blah blah blah, ignition's on, yeah. Um, flick the ignition off for a second, yeah, yeah, it gives you loads of instructions, don't set the place on fire. <sighs> ignition back on, yeah, start the engine, it's going to be too cold at the moment. You know saying? You're too cold, heat the bastard up. So give it. Now, again, another very, very quick point, which surprises me how many people don't know this. You could hold that at 3,000 revs or whatever, great, it will slowly warm up, but if you tether the throttle, Yeah, like so. Um, the heat radiates much quicker. Uh, you get heat soak in the engine, uh, the up and downness of the revs. Cause it's warm up faster, it waste less of your time. Cause you're in work, in your workshop, you've probably got a service manager or someone wanting you to get on the next job, so you need to be, you know, sharpish, use your head. Uh, come on, bitch. Five degrees left. And I'll show you the boring point I'm trying to make here. Blah, 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 blah. Come on. 63 degrees. 64 degrees. One more big rev. Let it idle. 65 degrees. Right. We click OK. Yeah, yeah, don't press anything. Right, it's trying to regenerate now. Um, okay, you fucking idiot. Clearly, this isn't the tool I meant to use. If I was using the snap on, it'd actually be showing me the exhaust temperatures. Anyway, I guess uh, because I don't want to hold it for a, the whole duration, half an hour, um, on the snap on, you can watch the actual exhaust temperatures while it's doing this, and you'll see it's not getting to temperature. Why is it not getting to temperature? Because the Vaporizer, that's the fucking word I was looking for. The vaporizer in the exhaust is clearly not working. So there you go, it's doing its regenerating. I'm gonna cancel this shit and just throw it in the air and then show you how we actually test the vaporizer. Wait until the engine returns to idle speed, then key off immediately. Because we're good boys, we listen to the instructions. The yeah, ignition's off. Yeah, of course the regen failed. Right, I'll get out in the air and all. Show you what we're going to do next. In fact, I'll show you what we're going to do in the fuse box first. Right, because the old ejaculator vaporizer thing is basically just a little injector and a glow plug together, it has a fuse. Uh, it'll be on whatever your data supply you use is, but one of them will list the fuse. I'm pretty sure it's two or six, uh, but you got it open, just go through them all. Boom, boom, boom. We're not testing properly with like decent equipment, we're just testing for fuse continuity, so any piece of shit like this. Don't buy one of these, they're rubbish. They're really good for quick testing, but they're actually rubbish for in-depth testing, but let's see, you know, the fuse is fucking light. Anyway, we check our fuses. In this case, no problem with the fuse. So we'll throw it up in the air and have a look. La la la, fucking Check them all, just check everything. Right, so, 
this is your vaporizer. You've got fuel in, glow plug. The worthy fella. Right, what's nice to do is take them off, actuate them on the computer, see if it's squirting out diesel. It'll be rusted to fuck, no chance of getting it off without cutting it off. Other things you can do, test resistance to the glow plug. Pull this off and see if fuel comes out of here. Um, so what we'll do is first I'm going to see if I can get it off and then we'll carry on testing. But they're fucking shit. Um, terrible idea. But there we go. Ford cunts. Right, so like I said, see solid. What I normally do, hack them off. But because I'm trying to show you guys uh, what exactly the problems are, because I know it's that, I don't have to check it, I just fucking know. But I'm such a nice dude, I broke out the gas. And I've loosened her off. I don't know if you can see. So I'll get it out and I'll show you what's next. Right, right I'm having a bit of a shit day of it because I don't know what's going on. Auto was fucking me around. I used to be able to actuate this um, and see the fuel. So I tried to snap on it and that's gone as well. So I don't know what's going on with the tools. Unless they just don't like this software version on the vehicle. Anyway. These suffer with one of two or both faults, which would be that hole there. So your diesel squirts out into the exhaust system. Gets all blocked up, as you can see how carbon this fucker is. <coughs> um, well, the glow plug stops working. I mean, uh, you can pull it out and test it if you want, or you can just do an ohms test uh, between the feed plug and the body. I've just checked it. Glow plug's fucked. Um, and because I couldn't actuate it for some reason today. I've just pressurised that with some fuel um, and a priming pump and nothing's coming out of there so that's also blocked. So it's fucked. So you found the cause of the problem but that's not the end of it. You still need to check the integrity of the DPF. Is it blocked? Obviously it's not 200% blocked like the computer says because that's not possible. Um, but before you ring up your customer and say, oh, you need one of these and it'll be job done, you need to know if the DPF's fucked. Um, and if you have to replace it or clean it or whatever, um, it'll be on, it will be beyond regeneration capabilities. Luckily, we can clean them, yeah. Um, but you do have to be very careful when they're soot laden, because uh, it's a big fire hazard. Um, so now we'll test the DPF. Just quickly, while I'm um, setting things up for a pressure test, a couple of things. Firstly, that thing there, is not DPF, that's a cat. Um, it's, it's probably, if you're not familiar with the systems, it could be an easyish mistake to make. Okay, so that's one. The other thing is, right, so when you're pressure testing, you just want to use the pressure pipes, and the pressure sensor is up there. The amount of fellas I see fucking wasting time trying to connect up there when you've, you've got these fuckers here, just attach it there. Easy, done, two seconds, um, and you're away. Bang, 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 job done. Get it diagnosed, get it fixed, get it out of the fucking door. I set up. Now I use this little fella, as you can see, wired up under to the exhaust under the car. I'm sat in the car because I'm on my own. Uh, you could use a Mitivac or any other sort of gauge, or if you were a real Mr. Fancy Pants, a pressure, a pressure transducer connected to your, oh well, whatever machine you use, maybe a Pico scope, something like that, and you can give your customer fancy printouts. But fuck all that, this is quick and easy. So, what we do, we want to fire her up. See what our pressure is at idle. Straight away, I'm not particularly happy with that. I'd like to see it at zero. And give her a rev. So that's just. Can you see both? So, 3k, we're outside the safe, tolerable zone. And considering it's in limp mode, so it won't allow me to rev any higher than that, I'd imagine it's a lot higher. And I can reset the parameters and it'll temporarily allow me to rev it. But I know she's blocked, so she's going to need a clean or replacement afterwards. Like I say, we clean them. Uh, depends on the position you're in, you could send it away, clean it. Don't buy any of that shit that the fucking car suppliers sell that you pour in. All we ever see is cars come back three months later. Loads of DPF faults, it's hard to narrow down because the pressure's all right, because all that crap just rests in the bottom and causes flow problems. Uh, send it away to a professional company if you haven't got clean equipment, or get a new DPF. Don't buy a shitty aftermarket one either. Write the car off and buy a genuine one. Anyway, it's the end of this boring diagnosis. So we've got a, the, what's it fucking called? The ejaculator exhaust um, vaporizer. Inoperational. 
I'm a knob as told the customer, carry on driving it and just drive it up and down the motorway. Well, if your fucking DPF is not regenerating, it's going to continue not regenerating and block further and further. That's terrible advice. Get it fucking checked as soon as the light comes on. Get your customer in, look after your customer, keep your customer. This is just cost, you know, if the man had his car fixed when the light first came on, it probably wouldn't need the clean or the, um, or replacement, depending on what your position is. Would have saved him a fucking at least 300 quid off the bill. Anyways, it's half an hour.